Ladies and gentlemen, Salam Mike. With day, day two, video three, week three. We already filmed day one of week three, and now um, deadlift day. So we're talking splits. We're gonna talk nutrition a little bit. Full day of eating coming. I appreciate all the love there. Uh, maybe we can get the one and only Alan Thrall to do a full day of eating with us. We'll see. Um, but basically, uh, questions I got were. Uh, recently were how many sets how many reps do you need for each body part each week to make progress and progress is obviously dependent on the individual um your stage in lifting your genetics but uh, also what's the most optimal kind of split the split is still such a weird term that's thrown around i think because of um the multi you know big media stations like men's health and stuff they do some really cool things for the industry they obviously promote a healthy lifestyle and they have some good information seeped in tucked in but behind a lot of the information that's just blanket it's just old it's just not really necessary or relevant um to the main goals um which is hopefully just making progress and whether you're trying to get stronger you're trying to get bigger you're trying to lose weight you're trying to gain weight uh, a lot of it's obviously the nutrition part but in the gym we should just focus on doing a certain set of lifts that work for our body and our mind that we enjoy that we can do without pain that we can make progress in now, if you're a power lifter, obviously those have to revolve around the squat bench dead. If you're a weight lifter, they have to revolve around the clean and jerk and the snatch. If you're a bodybuilder, they basically don't have to revolve around anything. Whatever it can do for you to build the body that you want, whether you're competitive or not, that's all that matters. Um, how many sets and stuff per week is kind of dependent um, on the individual. But there are some blanket statements that are, you know, ranges that we can maybe fit ourselves into. Uh, if we're talking big lifts... Again, a beginner will be very different than someone who's already deadlifting seven, 800 pounds. But um, for a big lift, if we're seeping anywhere between maybe eight and 16 sets per week, split up between one to three sessions, you're probably in the range. Uh, smaller muscle groups, if you're trying to just hit your delts, just trying to hit your tries, just trying to hit your buys, uh, we might be able to get a, a little bit more volume in there and handle something maybe in between 12, 24, maybe even 30 um, sets. And that's spread across different exercises, right? So I'm not just doing 30 sets of, of uh, strict overhead press. Although, if you work your way up there, you could probably handle that just fine. The body's capable of amazing things. If you listen to all the motivational speakers that are happening online nowadays, they tell me my mind is my only limit. Um, but if you're doing some face pulls, which kind of hit delts, some lateral raises, uh, even the bench press, obviously overhead press, those all hit the delts, uh, and those can all kind of be thrown in that muscle group. Uh, same thing with the bicep. If we're talking chin-ups, some kind of hammer curl, and maybe some kind of preacher curl, 30, you know, maybe 20 combined sets throughout the week. Um, frequency is going to depend on the individual as well. I think uh, the pendulum swings in everything we do, from politics um, to nutritional strategies, right? Uh, no fat to high fat to moderate fat to flexible dieting to paleo to vegan. These things swing to the extremes. Um, high frequency training swung to an extreme where people are deadlifting their faces all five times a week and um, that's probably just not going to be best for longevity overall uh, it's possible and some people might be able to get away with it but again the answer is often in the middle which isn't as sexy which isn't as cool which won't get me the views won't get me the likes or the popularity of other people just eating broccoli or just eating steak 24 7 but um, you know, for a deadlift, one to three times a week. For a squat, maybe one to four times a week. Uh, a bench, probably two to four times a week. I say one because that's a rare extreme where someone can't handle twice a week, um, depending on the individual. But I imagine, I don't know, but if you bench 750 pounds, it's going to be real hard to get that uh, kind of weight on your shoulders four times a week. Generally speaking, though, again, the split is that old school thought where I'm just hitting delts on Monday, just hitting biceps on Tuesday. Um, and not only will we be out of practice if we only hit a, a muscle or a, a lift once a week, um, but more so we'll be able to handle more volume and intensity if we spread it out. If I'm doing three um, really hard sets of deadlifts, I could probably do that every three days. If I'm doing 10 really, really hard sets of deadlifts or, or lats or whatever every Monday, um, then I probably won't be able to do as much. But if I do it every three days, now in a month, I'm going to overall be hitting more deadlifts, more lats, more sets, more volume, more progress, right? Um, and so that's the overall spectrum. And how do you learn? How do you, where do you start? Um, if you're brand new, you obviously just follow a program. Even if you're somewhere in the middle, you probably follow a program or a coach. Um, but once you've been lifting two, three, four, five, ten years, you start to slowly troubleshoot and refine what works for you. And that's what I'm doing. So we got um, basically lifting every single, uh, every other day for me. Uh, just feels good with my mind, feels good with my body. Uh, squats mixed in with my push day. So benching and squatting basically every four days. Deadlifting and doing some kind of Latin bicep work every four days. Uh, now in a week, 
you know, the other thing too is this, you know, seven day spectrum or seven day uh, week doesn't have to fit our programming perfectly. I'm technically kind of on like an eight day rotation. So I don't lift every Monday is my squat and bench day. Um, again, it's every other other day, yeah. if that makes sense to you. And we can write some of that out and show you uh, what it is. But that's just kind of what the basics are working for me. Uh, the other, you know, general rules we're looking at are, are, are changing rep schemes or changing variations in some kind of block. So you don't want to just be doing heavy single with no back down work and nothing else uh, for the rest of your life. Uh, switching up your rep range not only will allow you to progress um, in strength, but also hypertrophy. So if you're, uh, we can get into more depth on blocking things out, but uh, generally speaking, hitting a variety of rep ranges with that same lift. So I'm deadlifting, right, b basically twice a week. Uh, one day is going to be a little bit more reps, a little bit less weight. The other day is going to be a little bit heavier. Um, as we get more specific towards powerlifting or towards bodybuilding, that's when you have to refine those reps perhaps even refine the exercises themselves to allow you to uh, optimize what you're doing. But there is no optimal. Um, basically, I was having a conversation with someone uh, online and they're asking me, Mike, I, I feel like I'm spinning my wheels. I, I want to be optimal with what I'm doing. Um, but that's kind of a perfectionist mindset. There is no optimal. There's things that we can tweak to try to do our best um, to be as optimal as we can. But I don't know if today's workout was optimal. There's no way to quantify that. Um, and there's no way to do everything absolutely perfectly. So we kind of have to throw that out the window and do the best we can day in and day out, refine our programming, our nutrition over time, and just do it for a very long time. Um, and not only will you get better at refining it, troubleshooting over time, but the, the number one key is just that consistency. And no one wants to hear that again. It ain't sexy. It's not eating broccoli and steak all day, every day. It's it's not doing, you know, a thousand push-ups a day workout for men's health, but sorry to bash you men's health. You guys have done some good work. You're just the only one that pops in my head. Um, but yeah, it is what will work over time. So that's where we're at. Nothing's optimal. No perfect split. No perfect life. Let's break the, ourselves from the constraints of society telling me I need to be perfect. Ladies, feel me? Uh, we'll be back next Monday, man. Uh, we may may or may not have some special guests coming to the YouTube channel, so stay tuned. I appreciate you. Sound like we got here. Week three. Diving in, training. The comeback is full flow right now. All the positive comments, man. Thanks for the love. Be sure to give this thing a thumbs up. Subscribe, new videos every Monday, and we might be just twinkling in a couple videos here and there throughout the week, and gaming channel coming soon. Um, today, I don't know if I've talked about my split too much, but we're gonna talk about some basics of my programming. Um, keeping it real simple, I'm training every other day. I think one, mentally keep me in the game, two, to allow my back some recovery. Um, I don't really have like an ongoing injury, but my back tends to lock up on me really bad and it'll be stuck for weeks. So I don't want that to happen, although my back's a little sore right now. Um, we're still getting it done. So um, squat day is paired up with push day, pretty simple. Doing a couple cycles, so I'll do three to maybe five weeks of a certain movement, then I'll switch it up. So we got the safety squat bar as the current cycle. Went pretty heavy last week, so today was quote unquote deload. I just went a little bit lighter, triples, uh, two plates and a quarter, whatever the heck that is, 295, 300 pounds with the safety squat bar, um, and then push. So uh, benches were all taken. I was actually popping here at Untamed Strength, Alan Thrall's gym. Um, so I waited around for a bench, couldn't get one, whatever. I make do. Uh, I'm not that friendly, so I didn't want to work in. A little chest press machine, uh, one of my favorites, a little hammer strength, and then Viking press afterwards, which is basically like a hammer strength shoulder press standing. Uh, it's a strongman unit, uh, feels really good. So loaded that thing up, keeping in, you know, kind of the hypertrophy ramp range, uh, just doing moderate weight, moderate loads. So anywhere from like six to 10, I'll do on the second movement, um, kind of my, my bread and butter rather than the strength lifts and then finish off with some triceps and push downs. Um, overall feeling really good. There's some kinks uh, just in your body as you get back into training. Uh, it's a little bit chilly here. Everyone's commenting like, Mike, are you live in an igloo? Like, no, but we don't live in LA. It's not, excuse me, it's not like 70 degrees all the time. It gets like 40 degrees. When you're in a warehouse gym, uh, some of my joints, I'm getting a little bit older, kids. So um, just taking time to warm up. That's why I kind of wear tights and a beanie, uh, hop on the, uh, Assault bike, the Aerodyne deal, um, try to warm it up. So joints feeling a little bit um, glued, I guess, from the weeks um, of taking time off. You know, when you squat more often, I was squatting every day this summer, um, my joints felt great and that's just the truth of it. Uh, but when you're out of practice and now you're adding stimulus, now you're adding load, um, they just get a little bit achy. So uh, pushing through the hard part, I know that I knew in my head weeks one and two would be easy in terms of recovery, but feel heavy. And then I knew from like week two to eight, I'm gonna feel a little grindy and beat up, but uh, that's just part of the game. Um, and so you acknowledge it, you don't let it stop what you're doing. Um, if anything's stopping what you're doing, you just kind of work around, focus on what you can do, what you can't. Uh, and that's kind of where we are. So um, body weight's down about five pounds. Again, just focusing on uh, protein, nothing too, uh, 
particular with my nutrition, feeling solid. I have a spin bike, it's at my mom's house. I'm trying to get a truck to drive it to my house because I want to spin uh, every day just because I don't like walking in the cold and I'm just less likely to actually get it done. You want to set yourself up for success, nutrition, workout, etc. So you want to be able to build those habits and build the routine and build the environment that allow you to succeed. And I know for me, having that uh, spin bike in my house I'll be much more likely to ride that thing every day, get some blood on my legs, open up my hips, uh, which should then, long term, not only my conditioning, burning a little extra uh, calories to help me lose weight, but my back will feel better. Um, I just get a little uneven hips and then QL and things tend to lock up, but it is what it is. Feeling good, mood's pretty good. Um, we gotta go eat some food. Next training day's one day off and then we're going to um, deadlift back day. So I'll do deadlift, back some biceps, pretty basic. Again, I'm just pulling from the ground for now. Um, again, three to five weeks, but then I'll probably choose a variation or two uh, and kind of rotate those around, at least for my main strength movement. Um, it might be like a block pull, might be a pause, maybe pull against bands to start. Sometimes that feels good. Uh, we'll see, we'll see as it goes. Nothing too particular, just building her back up. Um, time to eat. I'll see you on Twitch, Monday through Thursday, live streaming. If you guys are into Twitch or if you just want to come hang out, ask me anything, uh, fitness or otherwise related, we're always just chilling all evening long, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I appreciate you. Uh, time to roll, and uh, we'll catch you on deadlift day. Perfect.